Hello there. Today we're going to talk about the skin. So your skin is a really important part of your body, and in fact it is part of what we call the integumentary system. The integumentary system includes the skin and all the things that essentially hold you together and protect you. So the skin has three basic layers. It has an epidermal layer, which is up at the top. It has a dermal layer, which is in the middle, and then it has a hypodermal layer, which is on the bottom. These three layers are each split to contain different tissues and cells and perform different functions as part of the skin. The epidermis contains almost exclusively epithelial tissue and specifically stratified squamous cells. Squamous cells are these sort of oddly shaped, squishy or round cells. And at the bottom of the epidermis, they are fairly round and large, and they are alive. So each of them also has a nucleus. If you see the epidermal tissue, that is typically what it looks like. These cells are mostly keratinocytes. And they produce keratin, which is the protein that helps to protect your skin. So the cells produce the protein keratin, which remains inside of or right around the cell. And then as the cells grow and continue, they become a little bit more squished as they get further and further up to the top. So the cells are large at the bottom, and then they replicate and produce a new layer and the cells become squishier and squishier and squishier, and they begin to die. So the cells near the top are no longer living cells, but they are still full of the protein keratin. So this many, many layers of cells contains a significant amount of the protein keratin, and that protein is what provides you with your waterproof lining of your skin, and it helps keep the water inside of your body, which is important because you are mostly made of water, but it also helps keep too many external things from invading your body. So the keratin protects you by holding in water and keeping out extraneous substances, bad guys, bacteria, things like that that would find their way into your body. And again, the cells at the bottom section are alive and growing and replicating, and the cells at the top are mostly dead and simply protein carriers, and they slough off when you bump into things and as the new cells grow. This layer is able to replace itself quite easily since the cells at the base are continuing to multiply and divide. Keratinocytes aren't the only cells that you will find at the base, as there are also melanocytes. There aren't quite as many of these, and they're few and far between, but what they do is they produce the pigment melanin, which provides the skin with color. This melanin is produced by these cells and then disperses throughout the skin to give it colors. Some people have more active melanocytes, meaning they produce more pigment. Some have less active melanocytes. The pigment is also able to help reflect rays of the sun and especially UV rays so it can protect people who were originally in areas with a significant amount of sun. So most of the time people with higher melanin productions have an ancestry that came from around the equator, for example, Africa or other areas with significant sunshine such as parts of Asia and South America. These melanocytes can be activated by sun, and so if you go out and get a sun tan, you are producing more melanin from the melanocytes. However, they could be injured as well, so if you burn enough so that you hurt them, they may stop producing or they may significantly overproduce. The top portion of your skin is also protected by oils that are released from glands called sebaceous glands and these sebaceous glands release these oils onto your skin which also help to keep it 
protected and in the right state. So keratin plus the oils do a good job of making your skin cells happy. A last thing that happens in your epidermis is that the cells, the keratinocytes at the base that are also actively replicating, produce vitamin D, or at least a chemical that will become vitamin D. And they produce this when they are exposed to UV or sun radiation. This produces a situation where we have some issues because we don't want too much sun because it may mutate our cells causing cancer, but we need some sun to help us produce vitamin D. Most of the time, you don't need that much sun for vitamin D. It's about 15 to 20 minutes a day of direct sunlight. But in places such as upstate New York, where there's a significant amount of cloud cover, sometimes people don't even get that. So you may still want to look into taking a vitamin D supplement. On the other hand, if you live in a place that gets a significant amount of sunlight, you may get more than you need for vitamin D production, and then you'd want to protect your skin with sunscreen to keep it from mutating those cells and causing skin cancers. Let's move on to the dermis. The dermal layer has a number of interesting things in it. One of the most important of those are the nerves that are for sensation. Nerves come through the dermis, and a lot of times they have their endings in places up near the surface. So they're not actually in the epidermis, but they're right next to it. So if you push on the epidermis or even scrape across it, those nerves are activated and you can feel them. They pick up pressure, they pick up pain, and they pick up temperatures. So there's a number of different nerves that are important here. If you've ever noticed, the worst kind of pain tends to come from something that slices right against where the nerves are, like for example, a blister or a paper cut. It goes right under the epidermis to the dermis. And a blister is a pocket of fluid that sits right between the two because they've been rubbed and separated. And that activates the nerves as the fluid pushes on them, which is why blisters are so painful. Another important part of the dermis is that it's part of the protection of the body. So it contains a bunch of tissue called areolar in which it has a number of protein fibers such as collagen and elastic that help to protect you by generally being sort of a mesh work that can pick up any kind of pressure that you push against and protect the stuff underneath it. These protein fibers are produced by little cells that are called fibroblasts. So here, for instance, would be some fibroblasts that are hanging out here in the areolar tissue. You'll notice there's a lot less fibroblasts than fibers. And if you injure the areolar tissue by cutting a little too deep or burning a little too deep, those protein fibers, like the collagen, can be very difficult to replace, and it takes much, much longer to heal from something like that than it does if you only injure the top layer or the epidermal cells. Another important thing that you find in the dermis are the hair follicles. So the follicles dip down into the dermis and, of course, stick up into the epidermis so that the hair itself can stick out. And these hair follicles are integral to helping us maintain temperature because when we are cold, the hair follicles have a little muscle that pulls on them so that they stand up. So here's a muscle that is attached to this little hair and these teeny tiny muscles help pull up the hairs. They also produce the goosebumps that you see when you get cold and can be involved in the shivering process. When you are warm, the dermis helps you because similar glands to the ones that produce the oils that you need also produce sweat. So you have some glands that are specific to producing sweat, for example, this one that I'm going to make here, and some that are specific to producing oils. And they are different glands. The oil glands are called sebaceous. So if you look in the dermis here, you'll find it does quite a lot of important stuff. It is involved in protection by having squishy areolar connective tissue. It is involved in temperature regulation with sweat glands and hair follicles. 
and it is involved in sensation with nervous tissue and nerve endings. In fact, all four tissue types are found here in the dermal layer of the skin, nervous, connective, muscle, and epithelial, which lines the hair follicles and the glands. So it is the most complex layer of skin. Finally, onto the hypodermal layer, which is all the way at the bottom. The hypodermal layer really contains one major kind of tissue, and it is entirely for protection and temperature regulation, and that is adipose tissue, or fat cells. So these big fat cells are in just a little layer below your skin. This isn't the fat that makes a person fat. This is actually a necessary layer of fat that keeps you insulated because we are warm-blooded creatures and we can stay warm even when it's cold out. And then also provide a small extra layer of protection against any kind of pressure that might get to injuring our muscles and bones that are hiding beneath these layers of skin. So you can see all of these are important factors in the skin the epidermal layer made of epithelial cells, the dermal layer, which is made of all four tissue types, and the hypodermis, which is made of mostly adipose or fat tissue. And your skin is integral for protecting you both to keep in water and other substances and to keep out bad guys like bacteria and also sunlight that might injure your cells. Your skin is integral in sensing the world around you, both pain, pressure, and also temperature. Your whole skin is in integral in controlling your temperature, both cooling you down when it's warm and warming you up when it's cold. And you need your epidermal layer to produce vitamin D in sunlight, which is an important vitamin which may help with a lot of the rest of your body systems. Hope you enjoyed learning all about your skin.